Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to talk about beginning to trade on the stock market for beginners in uh, in Canada, which brokerage accounts I personally use, why I like them or what I like about them and what I don't like about them. How easy it is to set up an account and start trading and buying your favorite and buying shares of your favorite companies right away. And I'm also going to give some uh, some stock uh, tips or in my opinion good buying opportunities and I'll share my portfolio at the same time. So obviously the importance of trading on the stock market is to grow your money, make a better return on your money invest your money in businesses or in companies that you that you like or trust it obviously you could leave your you can invest your money at the bank in mutual funds but you have less of a control and at the end of the day a mutual fund is a group of stocks but instead of buying into a group of stocks at the same time not being able to choose at what price you're buying these individual stocks in that group of stocks is not as beneficial as buying individual stocks at the price you want at the right timing as long as you stick to to great companies don't get greedy and uh, start day trading or or buy penny stocks just because you heard someone doubled their money or made this much return it's really not that complicated so i use two different brokerage accounts every bank has its own brokerage account so cibc has a brokerage account rbc td scotia bank uh, national bank so in terms of banks i i use investors edge account so here's what the uh, interface looks like for the investors edge account it's clean it's simple got a great uh, research tool you're able to look up uh, analyst reports easily it's got financials so in terms of fees they're pretty good especially compared compared to the banks they charge 695 per online trade so regardless the amount of shares you're buying it's going to be a fixed fee of 695 and there's no minimum account balance and no minimum number of trades that you have to make in a quarter or in a year so they're pretty good actually only seven dollars per trade and no maintenance fees either so for registered account tfsa resp or rrsps no uh, no maintenance fees so for tfsa and resps no no account fees no annual fees and for rrsps so you need to have more than twenty five thousand to avoid a 100 dollars annual fee for rsps but per trade it's only 695 and per option trade it's 695 per trade and one dollar 25 per contract so if you're buying three contracts it's going to be 695 plus 125 times three so 375 plus 695 so about 11 dollars. and they have a special pricing for active traders if you make 150 trades or more per quarter you get charged 495 a trade regardless for beginners you should not be an active trader you shouldn't be doing 150 trades per quarter unless you're a day trader which is much much riskier Still, seven dollars a trade is is excellent. I also use Quest Trade. It's an online brokerage. It's not linked to any bank account. They have the low. They are the lowest in fees. Only it's a cent per share. Minimum four ninety five. Maximum nine ninety five. I believe or ten dollars. So it's it's between five and ten dollars per trade. So depending on the amount of shares you trade, it'll vary between five and ten dollars. So if you're if you're just starting off, it's most likely going to be five uh, five dollar trades. Uh, what I like about Quest Trade is the interface. The interface feels more like a trading account it's more real it's more real time and up to date for example it, it always gives you your buying power here at the bottom the balance page has your total in canadian total in us and it has combined canadian and combined us i also like that their uh, their conversion rate or their exchange rate is is better than the banks so if you're converting from canadian to us they add about 1.5 percent on top of the uh, spot price but with Investor's Edge, the, the spread between buying and selling is much higher. So you end up losing more when you convert Canadian to US um, on Investor's Edge. Unless you already have US dollars that you converted in another way and you, you transfer your, your US dollars to Investor's Edge. But if you convert with Investor's Edge, it's not going to be beneficial. You're, you're losing a lot of money just in uh, converting from Canadian to US. And vice versa. So I prefer Quest Trade because they have lower fees and better conversion rates. The interface is also more user friendly. So let's say I have uh, two thousand dollars cash and I want to place a trade. I want to place an order on on a company and I, I only want to use a thousand dollars. So when I place my order, it'll remove a thousand dollars from my buying power. So it gives me right away how much available cash I have for for purchasing. But on, on Investor's Edge, if I place an order, it's not going to show me what is my new buying power. I have to I have to go in in my order section and see what orders I have and calculate myself how, how much buying power I have. So that's one advantage of Quest Trade over Investor's Edge. But an advantage of Investor's Edge is, of course, because it's linked to a bank, it's it's much faster to send money to your trading account and withdraw money from your trading account. 
it's usually same day or or one business day but most most of the time it's immediate same day but with quest trade it takes one to two business days to send money to your trading account and two business days to receive money from your trading account to your to your personal bank account so one disadvantage of quest trade is the administrative fees so opening an account is free tfsa rsp resp though has a fee an annual fee of fifty dollars and they in general any account you open there's an inactivity fee if your combined equity is below five thousand dollars so an inactivity fee is if you don't make a trade for three months a single trade either buy or sell they charge you 25 dollars per quarter so if for three months you don't make a trade you'll get charged 25 dollars. but then in the following three months if you end up making a trade they will credit you 25 dollars worth of trades so basically you're gonna get charged 25 dollars if you don't make a trade for six months and if you have equity below five thousand and the other fee that i don't like about quest trade is under in the rsp plan right over here full plan deregistration and partial plan de deregistration so when you come withdraw your money from an rsp there's a 50 dollar fee if it's a partial withdrawal and if you if you're if it's a full withdrawal it's a hundred dollars so that's something that's pretty annoying with quest trade but everything else everything else with quest trade is better than the banks the conversion fee the exchange exchange rate that they use their trading fees, their interface is better. And remember, this these fees here, it's only for RSPs. If you can open a TFSA, a tax-free savings account, it's better to use Questrade. There's absolutely, absolutely no fees. The only fee you have is for trading, $5 a trade, and the inactivity fee if you have less than 5,000 or if you make less than um, one trade every three months. So I use both brokerage accounts. So I'll use Questrade when I want to buy more US stocks and I'll, I'll use investors edge for canadian stocks but i hold i hold both currencies in uh, in both uh, brokerage accounts depending on where i had liquidity at the time i wanted to buy a particular stock but um, they're both very good if i had to choose one i would probably use uh, Questrade because the interface is easier to use and also because the us uh, conversion the investors edge conversion is is really bad the only way i would use investors edge is if i already hold us dollar in in a us bank account you in a us dollar bank account and then i would just transfer then i would just transfer my us dollar to investors edge directly but i wouldn't use investors edge to convert us dollars i would use a third party to convert but with quest trade i just can convert directly with quest trade it's easier less uh, less steps to use us dollars or, or to buy us stocks and they only charge 1.5 percent on top of the the spot price so if the um canadian dollar trading at the us dollar trading at 129 and you want to buy us dollars then it's going to cost you with quest trade it's going to cost you 1.29 times it's going to cost you 1.309 with the uh, investor's edge it could cost you easily 1.34 or 1.35 plus their app their app is their phone app is great uh, i get notifications when i buy and sell there's more options on it investor's edge app is a little bit uh, outdated and limited in so like i said every bank has its own brokerage account compared to the other banks C C cibc's investor's edge is better in terms of fees the other banks it's, it's going to charge you at least ten dollars a trade if not they have a minimum account a minimum balance that you have to leave in the account or even minimum amount of trades that you have to do i think i have a, I have a video i'll link it the, in the description below the video where i compare the different uh, brokerage accounts so let's look at my portfolio for today so if my quest trade account my tfsa got a total of 44.39 in canadian my holdings i have four shares close today at 1082 i bought it at 1091 so yeah another thing i like about question is that it shows the book value easily and it shows how much profit you currently have it's more real it's more in real time i've got exxon mobile at uh, that i bought at 75 trading at 73 in my rsp account i've got uh, this dividend 15 split corp that i bought at 669 close today at 669 also this one I like because it pays almost 15% dividends per year. I got some Ford options that I bought at 155, closed at 170, 171. About a week or two weeks ago, it was uh, trading at 215, giving me almost $120 profit on only $310 invested. And I've got some Walmart shares that dropped drastically. It was at 80, almost 88 today, right? I guess it closed at 86.05 that I bought at 86. If you go to my investor's edge account, when we look at the intraday changes, I got 62 shares of Enbridge, closed at 39, I bought at around uh, 47, average price 47. 
I bought it once at 48 and once at 45. In my TFSA, I've got Synovus Energy at 1058 that I bought at 15. My Enbridge at 39 that I bought at 42, 45, and 49. And Hudson Bay that I bought at 1350. On the US side, got some General Electric that I bought at 17. Climbed up today a bit. Kraft Heinz that I bought at 75. It's killing me. Dropped to 60. If I have more liquidity, I'll buy some more. And New York Mortgage Trust that I bought at 6, trading at 599. I have this stock because it pays uh, 12 to 13 percent dividends per year. So, to place a trade, so if you buy, there's a company that you're following and you want to buy some stocks of that company, I'll provide a link of a video in the description below the video where I explain or I show how to place a trade. It's very simple. So, I use Yahoo Finance to, to watch stocks or create a watch list. So some stocks to definitely consider is Facebook, of course, at 150. I personally, I'm going to try to find some more liquidity and I'm going to put an order at 150, either with $500 or $1,000. General Electric, of course, uh, Walmart, Kraft Heinz. On the Canadian side, Enbridge, definitely Enbridge. It, it pays a great dividend of almost, more than 5%. Right now it's at 6.78%. If you buy it at this price, 52 week high is in the, is high 50s and the one year target is also in the 50s. So this is definitely a great buy. Coca-Cola, personally I'm going to buy it if, if it drops to 40. Ford also, Exxon Mobil, L Brands, Victoria's Secret, Tesla, Tesla is, has become a, a very attractive stock to buy. 274, 52 week high was 389, one year target is 325, Procter & Gamble at uh, it's trading at 77 right now yeah so these are just some stock tips that personally I would definitely buy if I had more liquidity and some of them I already bought as you can see in my portfolio so if you have any questions leave them in the comments below any stock tips leave them in the comments below if you can open a quest trade account please use my referral code so we can both get up to $250 and here's the chart for referrals so if you invest a thousand dollars initially we each get 25 ten thousand fifty twenty five thousand seventy five fifty thousand hundred dollars and hundred thousand dollars two hundred fifty dollars each so most likely for beginners beginners it's probably going to be in that range 25 or 50 dollars thanks for watching